some of you have kind of seen in one form or another in the past, but uh, this is a request from Councilman Gilmore and Ferguson to revisit uh, the possibility of various uh, levels of smoking regulation. So, what do you know? Do you want to mention? No. Smoking. Smoking is addressed in two places, or the city addresses it in two places. One is the ordinance. Um, in Chapter 5, as an amendment to the International Fire Code. Hello. Hello. It's going to be closed. Um, uh, the second place is in city policy. So I'm going to address the ordinance first and then go to the policy. I wanted to review a few of the relevant uh, definitions in the ordinance. The first one is food products establishments, basically these are restaurants. The second are retail and service establishments, and these are your department, grocery stores, drug stores, any place that sells um, goods and services to the general public. An administrative area is basically any place in an establishment that is not open to the public, we're talking about individual offices, stock rooms, employee lounges, and rooms that, you can. that the public cannot. The public does not have access to. The ordinance prohibits smoking in several places, public libraries and museums, elevators used by the public, theater auditoriums, and places like that that do stage dramas, recitals, athletic events, except for the lobby and areas not open to the public. So you can smoke in those areas. Uh, retail service establishments and city-owned hearing conference and meeting rooms and any other place where basically the general public is invited to participate in the city business. So ordinance next addresses food product establishments separately. And again, these are restaurants, basically restaurants. Um, the ordinance allows smoking as long as there are separate indoor or enclosed dining areas for smokers and non-smokers. And it specifically says that some areas of the restaurant or the food product establishment cannot allow smoking. And those areas are um, non-dining areas which the public has general access, but that doesn't include the, rest the restrooms. They can smoke in the restaurant. They can smoke in the restaurant. <laughs> or the ordinance doesn't prohibit smoking in the restaurants. The individual food product establishment owner can prohibit smoking in the restaurants. Next, the ordinance uh, addresses workplace, schools, and healthcare facilities. It basically says that the owner can designate the building or any portion of it non smoking as long as it has a written policy that it communicates to its employees at least three weeks before adoption, that it prominently displays no smoking signs, and that it provides for the extinguishment of smoking materials. The ordinance also exempt, exempts certain areas. The first one are basically tobacco shops. Any retail service establishment which derives more than 50% of annual gross sales from the sale of tobacco. Administrative areas in the workplace, bowling centers, and bars. And that includes bars within a restaurant as long as the bar has more than 50% of annual gross sales from the sale of alcoholic beverages. Any, any public place consisting of less than 500 square feet. Any food product establishment consisting of less than 500 square feet. A food product establishment if the indoor seating seats less than 50 people, and hotel, motel, meeting, and assembly rooms, and rooms while in use for private social functions. So that was the ordinance. So in, in the restaurants, do the food preparers have to dump their ashes off to the side? <laughs> Okay, uh, now we can move on to the smoking policy. And the smoking policy uh, prohibits smoking in city-owned, operated, and managed facilities, in city-owned vehicles, and enclosed equipment, 
in the courtyard of this building and in designated areas of outdoor recreation facilities, including the tennis complex, municipal pools, restrooms, concession rooms, and 10 feet from um, the dugout or team benches, playing field or bleachers at Lake Park and Vista Ridge Park, and the restroom concession rooms in the concourse area of the amphitheater during city-sponsored events. In your packet, you have a copy of the survey that was done with our survey cities and their ordinances, and I have a general summary that I'll go through with you, but there's one disclaimer some of these policies are about as clear as mud, and some of them say one thing, but the city actually implements them in a different way. There was one situation where when I, I had some communication with city employees from that city, their ordinance said that smoking was prohibited in certain places, but in actuality, they allowed smoking as long as some um, provisions were taken into place, as long as there was a ventilation system, et cetera. So, this was the best I could do given that there's not a lot of clarity in how the ordinances are implemented. So we have 16 survey cities, as y'all know. All of them, except Grapevine, specifically have a smoking ordinance. Nine of them prohibit all smoking within retail service establishments, and we're included in that list. Eight of the cities prohibit all smoking in restaurants. Four of them specifically prohibit all smoking in bars. Now some of them, bars fit into the definition where smoking is not allowed, but they didn't specifically call bars out. So, another disclaimer. Three cities specifically address smoking in outdoor patios. You're saying there are bars, because I thought I'd go, I didn't know, there are bars that don't allow smoking? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, and those four cities, okay. you can go to any bar and you are not allowed to smoke. Ten cities specifically prohibit smoking within a designated distance from a door or operable window. Seven cities specifically pro prohibit smoking in a billiard facility. Six prohibit smoking in a bowling facility. Five, prohibit smoking in a bingo facility. Now, wait, back up. The bowling facilities. Yes. Now, for the cities that don't, is that because they don't have a bowling alley? Well, I'm sure Dallas has a bowling alley. I'm not talking about Dallas. Uh, I, I did not I look there. into whether <laughs> they actually had a bowling alley. I'm talking about the bowling alley. I'm talking about the bowling alley. Ms. Steve has a bowling alley. <laughs> under, under, under our ordinance, would a bowling facility be considered a retail service establishment or something different? Is it carved out? Uh, I, can't I, bowling I facilities that. are specifically exempted in our, okay. in original, our ordinance. Okay. The original ordinance uh, back in 87 uh, was one of the first things I had the pleasure of tackling. In 87, the ordinance did prohibit smoking in uh, bowling alleys and other facilities, so due to pushback and due to a large crowd at the next council meeting, then they uh, exempted out the bowling alleys. And <laughs> there you go. incidence of bowling and smoking? According to the number of team shirts that were there that night. Uh, yes. <laughs> Bowling may cause smoking. <laughs> we don't know. Twelve of the cities uh, specifically have ordinances that address smoking in parks or athletic complexes, and two of the cities regulate smoking in parks by policy, like we do. Explain that. Well, if it's a violation of an ordinance, you can issue a citation. Or if it's a violation of policy, you cannot. You can just ask them to leave or put it out. So we're down to our options. Um, with regard. Before we go back, we go back to you. Uh, page two and three, I guess. The slides on page two and three. What? Uh, page three. I don't have yeah. a page number, sorry. That one right there is page three. Okay. Thank you. Uh, where smoking is prohibited. This is current. 
retail service establishments. So does that include <coughs> convenience stores that sell cookies and cokes and stuff? It sh yes, because okay. a retail service establishment is any establishment that sells goods or services to the general public. So a convenience store would fall into that. So restaurants that sell to go food, why are they separated out? They're selling goods and restaurants are selling goods and services to the general public. Right, but there's a different, there's a separate definition that addresses food product establishment. So they would fall under the more specific definition. So basically, they're for whatever reason they've been carved out like the bowling. Correct. Center. Correct. So how would a how would a convenience <laughs> store, if a convenience store cooks hamburgers on premises, can they call themselves a restaurant and be able to smoke it? We have those in town. I think the answer is no, because we have a lot of stores, grocery stores, for example, are the best example is that serve prepared good food, and they're considered a retail, retail service establishment. Well, I understand that's how. Okay. Plus, that's how they rate that they see the people, right? Oh, this is true. Do what, ma'am? The less than 50 seats, seating people, they yeah. can't have smoking anyway. Well, no, they're exempted. No. So, no, the, no, no, the, they can. They can. Yeah. We got restaurants that have 50 people. I think it's just, in large part, because of what is the uh, uh, major purpose of their business? Is that how you view it? I mean, it, they took a hamburger, but that's not the predominantly what their business is. Right. I, I think it's like Eric said, or maybe Carlos said, it was just that when they did this, they decided to exempt restaurants, period. Well, they just started to carve them out specifically. Right, that's right. Carve them out separately. Yes. And in fairness, at the time, uh, this is about 86 or 87, the city of Dallas was one of the first in at least the North Texas area to attempt this. So this ordinance, right or wrong, was really not developed by so much city staff, but piggyback of what Dallas had, had done. Uh, some, some things that are a little different that don't, Liz and I have talked, but uh, the, the 50, less than 50 seating for like a donut shop or less than 500 square feet, you can. And when, it, when the citizens, when we first implemented it, they asked, well, why that, why not, why not the other? We really didn't have an answer, other than that's what Dallas had come up with, and it worked, and that at, that at the time, right or wrong, is what had happened. So with regard to the actual ordinance, and we'll address the policy next, um, we have several options, and you know, obviously, y'all can come up with more options. I was just brainstorming here. We can just keep the smoking ordinance as it is. We can um, do like Dallas, Flower Mound, and Plano prohibit smoking across the board. Uh, except for the common exceptions like tobacco shops. Um, Doesn't Highland Village also fall in bullet two? They weren't a survey city, so. Um, we can prohibit it prohibit smoking in certain establishments like the retail service establishments which we already do but we can also include restaurants and then allow smoking in other establishments like bars and bingo facilities and billiard facilities. Horse Fort tracks. Worth and Richardson has done that too. Horse tracks. We can allow smoking in most establishments but only in designated areas meeting certain requirements like separate ventilation is what Carrollton, Capel, and Irving do. Uh, and I, if we do specific, if we do prohibit smoking in certain places, I would suggest that we also look at prohibited smoking within a certain distance from the door so that you don't have a bunch of smokers all clustered in front of a non-smoking area. And uh, many of the, the cities do that. I, I add a little bit of language to that. Then I'll go ahead and say it. any door that's used by the public, um, because you know the back door to the restaurant is a different. Thing. Well, if you decide to prohibit smoking across the board and the workplaces, no, but I'm talking the distance. The, the distance, once you're outdoors, to the distance from the door. I'm saying door that's accessible to the public. The public uses to enter and exit the facility. 
talk to the staff. The staff wants to go outside and smoke. I don't want to send them across the parking lot. Yeah, we can certainly write it down. They're at the back door. You're not going to be back there. I just don't want to. Well, but, but this, that's what I just said. Yeah. One, one thing I know that Tyler goes to you, uh, to some of our stuff and, and talk with the staff and stuff, the council member. I know. The thing we're looking to do in this course is we'll fly down to the Put restrictions on it. Fireman did put restrictions from the door, so we can use the door. I'm not sure if you're forcing it, but put it in there. Or fireman chokes, they were going to pretty much copy it. I mean, how that was like, was going to copy it, and then they did go to their restaurants and stuff, and the restaurants asked them to pretty much, and I'm not going to the exact language, but you know, they allowed them to do it on patios. It means if you have a patio area, you could smoke there and they didn't call that being by the door because that gave their people, their patrons, that were there an ability to go outside and still be on their premises and smoke, but that was still close to the door. So that's just a, kind of a variation of people to help the businesses be able to hire. We still think you want that buffer from a certain distance from them. I was just saying, you know, an avenue that they use. Before we went to lunch today, you'd be walking through it. Yeah. Because the patio was at both right entrances. Right outside the door. Right outside both entrances. Where did we go today? Back to Fuzzy. There was no quorum. No, no, I wasn't very concerned. <laughs> uh, with regards That's to why we didn't invite you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have gone there. <laughs> with regards to the smoking policy, again, we can keep it as it is. We can prohibit smoking completely. Compel Flower Mound and Kenny and Richardson if they're not in the park. I'm specifically talking about parks right now. Uh, prohibit smoking in certain areas of the park or prohibit smoking only in designated areas. So in Grapevine, you can smoke in a park as long as it's not posted as non smoking. And we could also regulate smoking in parks by ordinance. We could include it in an ordinance instead of leaving it as a policy. So right now, Louisville is in the third point. Certain areas of the park. Yeah. Yes. Correct. A uh, certain park. And, and only yeah. have certain parks. If we keep it as is, I would suggest we uh, amend the policy to include railroad. Can we just make it something so we don't have to re change the policy every time we change a name or add a part or something else? Yeah. 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 We looked at that one time, I think, in doing it where if there were if any part and there were uh, Bleachers or something you couldn't smoke to be in so many feet of bleachers. Yeah, bleachers or, or covered shade structures or uh -huh. what, what they uh, what what they do. We haven't addressed playgrounds. You we might have not? We have not. You might want to consider oh, that. Oh, those are fine. Let those go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I just want to apply two cents in is I'm okay with uh, prohibiting smoking in all city facilities and parks and make that part of ordinances, but um, I have a problem with forcing that policy on private businesses. Uh, that's where I'm at on that. Um, I don't like smoking myself. I don't go to places that I can smell it. And I just, that's, I just don't do that. I think that's in our freedoms. But because it is a legal drug, smoking his drug, because it is legal, um, that is something that should be up to the business owners if they want that. Um, one question about the smoking. You had mentioned that some restaurants need to have a separate smoking and non-smoking area. And there are ordinance? Yes. Is, there, okay. is that supposed to be where you can't smell it in the other side? No, there's no requirement for separate ventilation. It's just required for separate areas. That's why I don't go to some of those restaurants because I can smell it and they're not smoking. What is the current policy for those little restaurants? You have to 
provide separate indoor or enclosed dining areas for smokers and non-smokers. So they just have to be separate areas. And that certain non-dining areas have to be non-smoking, like the cashier area or where you place your order. But there, it doesn't include the rest of the restaurant. But there's nothing in that that says, I'm non-smoking seating and you're smoking seating. As long there's as you're no, in a, sec a separate, like a, a section. section. So these two seats would be, uh, in this table, I guess these two seats could be non smoking and those three seats would be smoking. Yeah, because there's a designation of the table being a separate, but I mean. One moves to another. <laughs> Where do you go? Basically, you can still smell them. You can no, I, I mean. Yeah, yeah. So your point. My point being, a section could be, I'm sitting right next to a smoker because yeah. there's a piece of. Wood furring on the floor. Or sometimes that have like a like she a, like a sliding divider. No, not bad doors. No, no, no. no. no it's just going to be just a separate. Side. Or, or a strip of tape on the floor. If, if or sometimes there. you see like a sliding divider. Oh, I see. Divider. Okay, I, I thought you meant a separate door, and, you know, separating the rooms. Oh, okay. If I remember no. right, at Norma's and Carrollton before it got shut down, they had a sign that hung from the ceiling. Uh, many restaurants uh, have addressed this. Our our sanitarians and our and our uniform fire inspectors have been enforcing this annually for, for since really eighty seven or eighty eight. But in the restaurant section, if you're over fifty, you can see what the ordinance says. You have to, is the, that restaurant has to provide two areas uh, for smoking and non-smoking. They have to have it signed accordingly. The area. Uh, has to be a minimum, and this is again not much, but a minimum of four foot of separation between those two areas. A lot of restaurants have taken upon themselves to either prohibit it altogether, which they can, they, they own it, or they've done a better job of separating that through the years by ventilation, mechanical ventilation systems that are really expensive, or by glass, or by doors. You'll see some, they'll have lattice works, and some restaurants have not done very well. They literally are four feet apart. And uh, boots you know, it kind of just roams around. So, uh, and their competition in the Metroplex, they're aware of it. Your chain restaurants, a lot of them have already started doing ventilation systems, or some uh, have even prohibited that. And they have that right, and they sign it at the front door. But that's on their own actions to prohibit it all together. The ordinance says it has to be ventilated, but only where it needs to be. It doesn't mean separate. Like some of, like Carrollton has a specific ventilation system that has to be put in and ours ventilator can be an open window and it's only work piece of that. Point one up there. It can be read that you have to provide a smoking section. No, in the in the ordinance it specifically says that any owner that wants to have their staff <coughs> well, but there's a separate, there's a separate That's section at the uh, beginning of the ordinance that says any owner that wants to make their establishment non-smoking has the right to do so. So if you're going to have non-smoking section, you have to have, have, to have a smoking no, section. No, no. Yeah. I know what the intent is. But what she said is there's a first in, in the ordinance, in the ordinance, it states that you have the right to make your entire establishment non-smoking. And then as it goes through here, this is if you're going to do both, you have to And do that, it. that bullet point is truncated. The actual ordinance says, which has, it provides that you have to have a non-smoking if you have a smoking. Mm -hmm. Just to bring it in there? It doesn't provide that you have to have a smoking. Just if you have smoking, you have to have non -smoking. The way it's written says you have to have smoking. There's another part of the order. I understand there's see. another part of the order. Okay. I know what the intent is. And I think the owner should take the responsibility upon themselves to say, we don't want smoking in our food. And that's the way we should do it. Uh, and if you go to a place that you don't like, don't go there. If you don't like the way they cook their food, don't go there. If you don't like the fact that they allow smoking, don't go there. Tell the management, you're losing my business. What about the weed staff? That's another issue. Because if they had a lot of career choices, they need to run the mail. There's restaurants everywhere. No, restaurants everywhere that don't want to smoke. They could go down the street. But, but uh, yeah. 
we're going to stop all this. I get to the next thing, and it's it's already coming down the road. It is sugar, it is fats, it's everything else that's coming down here that they won't be able to sell it or it's be taxed with more. Their, 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 their consumption of that doesn't impact me. No, it's not it might in a healthcare is. ways, but oh. but if if I can get secondhand carbohydrates, okay, maybe. <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I did even real quick because I got to have a speaking card too. So does anybody have any questions of staff before we get before we get into discussion? Where are we going after this with private businesses that allow public consumption? Private businesses, what I'm sorry. Like a garage or uh, an office building. An office building, right. Where, when are we going to do that one too? Because what about the workers there? If we're concerned, let's do it. Let's do everybody. That would be my choice. I have no doubt that it would be. But if we're going to do it, why are we picking on the restaurants? I'm not. No. Well, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about smoking ordinance. It just happened that everybody's talking about restaurants. That's what we're talking about today, doing a proposal on the restaurants. Okay. No, we're talking about cross bars. Could be so this retail whole retail subject service. is about doing so away with smoking. General, generally, what? What would you want to deal with if you wanted to deal with it? So today we could vote on banning smoking in the city. Well, I'm, no, I'm not going to have you vote on anything today. What I think today, for what the college, of, we were going to have a discussion as to make sure, at first, make sure that everybody understood the current ordinance, ordinance as it is, which you just had a question. So make sure everybody does understand the current ordinance as it is, and then have some discussion on it about did we want to do anything or not, and if we do want to do anything, what would we want to do? And yeah. that's kind of what it is, so no, I'm not here to vote on anything today. Okay. okay. On that topic, Mayor, uh, to the city manager and to Liz's question, um, there are several ways this can come up to vote. Either we bring it up and vote for it, or citizens get together and do a petition get enough citizens so that it either comes to us to either vote on it or we vote for it to go on the ballot. Is that correct? You should have been referendum. Referendum. Yeah. Sorry, that's the word. Referendum. What is the amount of signatures that they need to have passed and verified? What's the percentage on that, on the voters? It's like 5% of the It's 5%. Voters. And it's and of over a year or just the last election? The, the last, last registered voters. The last municipal election. Last municipal election had 900 voters. people. Yeah. So they would need... 90 or 5% is 45 signatures. I can't, I can't give you an But I'm saying so that's about 5% of 950. Julie, it's registered voters, it's registered not voters, voters who voted. Yeah, that sounds it's good. registered oh. voters. So oh, I'm registered gonna, voters. I'm going to guess it's probably going to be like the local well, audit election it was and be somewhere between 4 to 5,000. 4 to 5,000. So if they did that, if the, group, yes. if, if, if the group that wants to ban smoking did that, we would either have to pass it or send it off to, to be voted on this one. I'm okay with going to the vote if they do that. So. Uh, I got a clarification that. If they do the petition last thing, is the petition for require us as council to make decisions or is the petition to allow the people to vote on it? You're saying if they're trying to do a referendum, Mayor, I have to look at the charter. I can't remember off the top of my head how it's written. But if, let's say, it was to go straight to be voted on, if you pass the ordinance and you voted on it, it would be moved. Right, to right. right. But, but their referendum, their petition would be, I, I thought we'd look at last year. I think James is pulling up the charter for me. So would be that to point. put it to a vote to the citizens, not to force the council. Well, we could do it. But the way I was not to say the council has to. Right, the way I read it is that we either pass it, if we didn't want to pass it, it would automatically go because of the petitions that automatically go to vote. And, uh, you know, this, I think, to your point, there's, there's three, make sure it's clear, that's not the only option. The other option is, one, the council, and what the legal has told me, the council itself had, can choose to act on this one way or the other itself. But without calling any election, the council itself can choose which cities, why am I not going to do what the initiative or the petition says that they should do? No, I'm talking about without a petition. We can do it without yeah, a referendum. I'm talking about a petition or anything. The council could ask, yeah. a member of the council could ask to be put on an agenda, the smoking orders be put on the agenda, if we could pass any form of a smoking 
support the minority if you wanted to without a referendum or without a vote of the general government. Okay. On presentation, what's your order? Thank you. Um, this is if you have a petition. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm going okay. all the way through the petition and all the requirements and the 5% All right. Upon presentation to it, the council, of the petition and draft of the proposed ordinance or resolution, so you're assuming there's an accompanying draft of the ordinance or resolution, it shall become the duty of the city council within 10 days after receipt thereof to pass and adopt such ordinance or resolution without alteration as to meaning or effect in the opinion of the persons filing the petition or to call a special election to be held at the next available election date in accordance with the election code. Okay. But, but that election would be for that same ordinance. So again, you yes. don't get to refine it yes. as council. Well, right. unless, right. 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 unless the party is yeah. presenting yeah. a petition to negotiate that. Right. But, but if they have the signatures, it's going to come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They can negotiate that. Hold on, hold on. Basically, we've got one option where, like I said, first, no petition, no nothing, just council. A council member asks for it to be put on the agenda. At that time, we can have discussions. The council does have the right I remember the attendance, correct if I get off this, the council does have a right to pass any kind of a smoking artist that they would like to keep as is or whatever they want. Or the council also could pass a resolution or a, was it, a, I don't know, pass a deal to put it on the ballot for the general public to vote. We could put it on the ballot for an election for the general public to vote. We would have to call the word. Yes. yes. The council itself would draw the wording for the and, option. And the vote would be binding. Right. And the vote would, vote would be binding. And then the third option, or the third deal would be if somebody does a, uh, a petition for us as well as just established there, then we would have to either pass ourselves or call an election. But the other two options are also there without a petition. I think I think that once the petition is supplied to the council, you can't change it. In my opinion, and Liz can chime in here, the only way you can negotiate is if the petitioner somehow withdraw it. I'm not yeah. sure there's a mechanism for doing yeah, that. Because you yeah. sign once it gets to the council, it's to the council. The reason you, you sign that you petition are stuck is that by is doing that one of two things. Do pass it or call the election. Yeah, I didn't sign that petition because I wanted a watered down version. I signed that petition because I wanted okay. that version. Okay. So any other questions just to ask? Do we have to do a little chat and we have some discussions? Okay. All right. First, got Steve here. Steve Hill, 964 Camden Drive, Lewis Hill. Uh, just a little bit of background. I don't smoke. Um, I'm allergic to smoke. My eyes get all red if I'm near it. I get all stepped up. Uh, personal family history, my grandmother smoked all her life, which caused my grandfather to die of lung cancer. All that being said, I'm completely against uh, increasing our smoke ordinance beyond what we currently have. I think uh, just going through it, re-familiarizing myself with what we have, I think it's very reasonable. I don't think we need to increase it. As lots of cities have introduced smoke ordinances over the years, one of the things I've always heard them say is, well, don't worry if you if we get rid of smoking in restaurants here in Dallas, well, then you can go to Capel or you can go to the next city over. And that range has expanded and expanded now to where there's no, not many cities left where people are going to be able to, uh, to go and smoke. There's a restaurant by my house. Uh, Italian place that I like to go to, or I kind of like the food, but I don't go there because they allow smoking. It's, I think it's probably less than 50 seats because it's just saturated with smoke. When I open the door, I can't make it from the door to the counter. So I exercise my vote with my feet or my wallet, and I don't go there. Even though I like the place, I like the food, I don't visit that place anymore because I can't physically go in there. I can't stand the smoke. So I would suggest that anybody else could exercise that same opportunity. They can leave that establishment if they don't like the smoke. 
don't have to visit there. The other point is that obviously, as a council, you have every right to uh, implement a smoking ban, no question. But you would never consider a smoking requirement. You'd never say to a restaurant, you must be smoking only. And so, to me, going to a restaurant and saying you must be smoke free only is just as ridiculous. Yesterday, we had some great presentations about how restaurants do all of this work to figure out where they want to be, and what kind of demographic, and which corner of the intersection they want to be on. And they spend thousands, if not millions of dollars on this research of who their customer is. So they know already what those, what those customers are and what those needs are. So if they have determined that they need to have a smoking section to fulfill their customers' needs, then we, as a council or as a city, I don't think we should be overriding that judgment. So I would think, I would again, just say, let's allow the business owners, my final point is, as business owners that own these restaurants, they should have the final say ultimately if they want to allow smoking or not. I'd be entirely in favor if, if you wanted to say, oh, you have to have ventilation or separated areas, I'm good with that, but I just really don't think that it's right to tell these businesses or their customers that they can't operate in the way that they would like to. Thank you. We have Adam. Did you want to have, did you want to speak? Do you have anything to say or did you just hear it? Yeah, yeah, just a couple of comments. Um, my name is Adam Filio and I'm the tobacco prevention specialist for the council on alcohol and drug abuse. And we do a lot of prevention work in uh, surrounding communities. We discuss um, public health in relation to substance abuse, tobacco, alcohol, other drugs. Um, some of the comments I'd, I'd like to make, um, when it comes to issues related to smoke ordinances, um, a fully comprehensive or smoke free in public places, um, private work sites, municipal work sites, restaurants, bars in restaurants and bars outside. Um, by eliminating um, smoking in these public areas, um, there are certain benefits as far as um, you think of employee health, um, especially with this economy. It may not be that simple for certain employees to go and find um, work somewhere else where it may be a smoke-free establishment. Um, and also uh, another key area that we um, like to talk about is also as far as um, youth exposure, um, one of the best prevention strategies that the city can do is by implementing a stronger smoking ordinance. And by decreasing the availability and exposure to um, tobacco and secondhand smoke, um, cities have seen drops in um, youth substance rates as far as tobacco is concerned. Um, especially in the city of Dallas, um, before and after they implemented their ordinance, there was a drop by um, half of the percentage of students who were currently using tobacco. It dropped by half. And so there's um, plenty of uh, benefits out there. And if anyone needs any additional information, I'd be happy to provide it. Um, you should have some in your city packets as well. Yeah. OK. Any other? Council, I guess one thing I always have to point out on this that about this juncture is that you know, restaurants tend to be the topic that winds up getting discussed and immediately kind of gravitate to, to restaurants. But in fact, we already prohibit smoking in hundreds and hundreds of businesses within the city limits today and have for many, many years. So we tell all sorts it's of people like how to run the It's not like this is something new. It's just, it would be new to restaurants. You know, if I, I can't have an open cesspool, it's illegal. Um, and we've made laws to make those illegal, but why? I'm making other people smell something they don't want to smell. It's unhealthy. I put a fence around it, but I can't have one because it's unhealthy and because it makes other people smell something they don't want to smell. Tell me the difference. Part of our mission is public health. That's part of our mission here is to make sure that we have a good public health. And I don't believe we'd be having this discussion 
if marijuana were legal. I think non-smoking would be the law of the land in about 48 minutes if, if marijuana smoke started floating around in restaurants or offices or something like that. So don't, don't give me this. So you flip it around, it's real simple. It's, it, if, now, if it were just located, if, you, if it, I didn't have to deal with it, That'd be one thing, but people do. It's 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 like being in the swimming pool. That's the old analogy. There's not a, there's not a, a no P zone there. You can't you don't get the segment. So I think we need to move forward with it, whether it's uh, comprehensive and matches up with our neighbors, or we look at some other option, or if we want to put it out there as a referendum to the citizens, I'm okay with that too. I'm gonna come back to one other thing. Y'all all got a copy of this, and um, on every single item, every single item. The overwhelming response was favoring non-smoking, but I'm going to zero in on item six: restaurant bar areas. Would you, fa would you favor or oppose an ordinance that would prohibit smoking? Favor, 563 people strongly favor, strongly oppose, 29. This Who is did this survey? Survey Monkey. Uh, survey Monkey did it up Carrollton. Survey Monkey. Hill. <laughs> yeah, I know, really. really I really Thank you. That's all I needed. <laughs> well, which means that people, it's, it's sort of like we were talking about getting people that pile in on something. That's the same thing that happened on this. It was a survey collected online from town hall meetings, public events, and 722 total surveys completed. Over 500 representing cities of Carrollton, Louisville, Grand Prairie, and Canada. The people who responded to it. The people who responded to it could have been just as one end of the bell curve as the other. And end. what meeting were they at? Town hall meetings, public events. Oh, so that this they went this to data set point. came from these folks back here. They might be able to speak to that right. and, and solve the question. That's a really the quick. Correct, you got he did the survey that Jim was speaking. He he wants to get the word you want to do. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir, if you want to get that. Sure, yes. Um, this was a key opinion leader survey that um, we used in different communities that we um, do our prevention work in, um, inclusive of the cities. Um, Louis was one of them. Um, these were surveys that were handed out through um, Survey Monkey and um, emailed out, and also um, we had copies that we took to prevention events, health fairs, town hall meetings within each community that um, citizens could fill out and give us their direct opinion if it was in favor, if it was opposed, really just to gauge what the community um, wanted as far as this topic. But was and it so a controlled was, sample? That was my question. Yeah, that's what it, it's not controlled. It was going to be random. And this is always the point at which I have to say that any kind of survey data that you rely on needs to be statistically controlled. Oh, great. I'm still paying for my sister. You don't want to spell this as cool. And I can't have one legally. And that's because we do create laws that protect people from what other people might do that would you know, affect their health or their well being or their comfort. It's nothing new. Well, I don't think there's, I mean, we sit here and argue all day long. But it's odd. The government right now, and I think all of us are, or some form of it, the government does control and manage people's lives and businesses. An example that probably everyone in this room would be in favor of is alcohol is a legal substance. However, you are not allowed to drive while you are drinking and intoxicated by alcohol. And I think that's probably a good thing, but that's a case of government being in and managing things. And I, so my thing is, I don't know that that's so much the issue. The issue I think that you look at is, do you want to put this into effect or not? Because we do that rather you wear your seatbelt, rather you, like you said, do the cesspool, allow standing water. We have ordinances that do not allow standing water on your own private property because it infests with mosquitoes and so on and so forth, high grass, same thing. All those things that prevent or go to health, safety, and welfare. I hate for us to get bogged down into uh, the issue of, well, uh, government doesn't, doesn't allow you to do this, they don't do The thing is, do we want to do this here or do we not? And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm 
I'd, I'd like to keep everything the way it is except extend the no smoking to all city facilities and parks. Would you be willing to have a referendum? Excuse me? Would you be willing to have a referendum? Let the, we let the residents vote to pass that ourselves. No, no, I'm talking about uh, more restrictive. If it got more restrictive than that, I'd be voting no. And if it came from the citizens to vote on it, you know, as in a referendum, either we approve it or goes to a, a citywide vote, then I'm okay with that. Frankly, you know, this, I think if it got to the citizens, it probably. Well, I don't know if it passed. I, I hear a lot of I hear a lot on both sides of the issue. I mean, it's not to me. It's not 90-10. It's 50-50, pretty much. So it'd be a tight vote either way. So I don't know what the citizens would do. Mayor, I think that the smoking ordinance needs to be addressed. I I don't think that I have enough information right here in front of me to take any action on it. Oh, I agree. I, I do not want us to call an election today or, or pass anything today. I okay. Do right. Well, I, I think we need to look into this smoking ordinance first. Right. And, and I, I appreciate support, that. I support looking into it. And that, that's what I agree with her to agree. I, I certainly would uh, no, recommend that, that we not do any kind of vote this. on an ordinance or anything today or even passing a, 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 a referendum to call a vote on the paper ordinance today. One, first of all, is because we've got to have some legal documented uh, policy that we would be considering first. And we haven't we haven't developed that. Legal policy? Are you saying you'd want to see a draft ordinance? If we decide to do that, I would think before we would vote on passing anything, we would want to see something in draft. I need ordinance. some direction as to how that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. What I just said was how I would want it, so we'll just let you know. Right, and, and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying. That's why I sure don't want to do anything today, because we would need to give staff direction as to something we wanted to look, possibly look at, give staff some direction, give us uh, any more information that any of you like to see on either side of the issue, so that you can become fully informed, including the group, including the group, if there's any other studies or anything, because Studies can, and I'm, I'm not certain I say your studies skew in any way, so I'm not suggesting that. But studies can be. I mean, if you remember when Purdue kind of brought up when the, the substitute sugar uh, people came out with a study that was funded by them that sugar was bad for you. And then the sugar company came around and found out that the substitute <laughs> things were bad for you. So it's like you, they can be skewed in way. Go ahead. Uh, Mayor, you know, just, I mean, one of the reasons that I think the current ordinance needs to be looked at is the way it's written here under the smoking is prohibited on page three ex except in the lobby or arenas not open to the public and I don't think we permit that do we in the lobby of the not a facility, but I'm talking about even in a restaurant. Is that this applies only to theaters, auditoriums, and places in closed facilities open to the public for the primary purpose of a motion picture, stage performance, it's so, sort of theater. So then I could smoke right out there in the hallway. No, because no, this is a city, city facility. This place has got a special. This is specially carved out. Or, or, or the theater down the street. No.